Hello, I'm David Hilser. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you're not buying exactly what mainstream physics and cosmology are selling, then this is the place for you. There are literally thousands and thousands of scientists working outside the mainstream for decades who have found problems, fixed those problems, and who are proposing new theories and models. There, you won't find anything like this, so you want to make sure you want to go down below and click on the subscribe button and little bell next to it and you will be alerted to when our next video drops. Today I'm going to be talking about special relativity and why we dissidents don't like it so much. I figure that's a good one since uh, you notice that many of us don't like it. Lots of us, there are thousands and thousands of us around the world who don't like it and people have written books and hundreds of papers on this and we've cataloged lots of them ourselves. But let's take a look at this subject through my eyes, a critical thinker who knows this community very intimately. Special relativity immediate turnoffs. Well, light speed limit. Oh, come on. We got to go faster than the speed of light. All the science fiction shows us that. We don't like that. So you're out of the gate. You don't like it. Mass increase in time dilation sounds kooky and there's no physical explanation. Absolutely true. Asking a professor about the mass increase and saying that, the, that there's a law and there is no explanation given. It's the law and you will regurgitate this on the test and show me that you know the truth because truth is found by me telling you what it is, not you being a critical thinker. Physics students, of course, drink the Kool-Aid because they want to be physicists and they laugh at the engineering students who scoff at it and they pass the course, they pass their physics course, they can even ace it and be very good at it, but they never look back and say goodbye, good riddance, just like my father did when he was at the University of Michigan taking his first physics course and they were talking about special relativity he didn't buy any of it. He went into the engineering profession, but now he actually is a physicist, in my opinion, working on his own theory. Well, let's take a look at the, of course, here's a, uh, I, I say, a, a stellar example of where special relativity goes wrong, uh, mass increase. If you watch my movie, which you can see for free, if you look back a few videos from now, um, I have a secret code, which you can go to the website and see the my documentary is about an hour and a half long really well made great music very fun a lot great story and you will see in there someone uh, basically says that mass increase is not observed that is a experimental physical physicist at the stanford linear accelerator says mass increase is not observed in particle accelerators that's a fact but people are said said to me well no oh dave you don't have it right it's not mass that does that, that increases it's relative mass increases <laughs> shoot myself, shoot me now, told mass doesn't increase, but the particle's energy increases. Of course, energy, if you believe energy and mass are the same thing, then how can you have like pure energy without, I don't get it. Of course, you know, that's one of the problems in mainstream science. We talk about energy like it's a thing and it's not really a thing because if it was a thing, it would increase if it was mass and mass doesn't increase see the problems. Okay, and then of course, we're the Stanford Linear Accelerator, um, doc Dr. Physics, at the SLAC, as we say, in uh, the area of San Francisco, of course, he's experimental physicist, and he has to unteach the special theory of relativity, S-T-R. Uh, where, which dissidents show Wong, where? Well, we have the nick of time. You should go see that YouTube channel. Uh, we have the link right there. Uh, you can see the link, and the link is going to be below. And the link, links down next to me are all the uh, suggested channels. Of course, we have a database of hundreds of, of papers, books, and scientists who have shown special relativity wrong. Dr. Karazani's autodynamics.org. That gives you a lot of information. Ron Hatt says, oh, by the way, now, say so you want to look for your 0.5 picosecond problem, you need to add the speed of the satellite to C on one way and then subtract it on the other way. What? You can't do that in special relativity, but it solves the problem in silent. NASA is silent. They're not coming back to Mr. Ron Hatch, who happens to have 30, over 30 patents in GPS and has yeah, become a fairly wealthy man because of his work in that. Um, and, you know, that's a problem. The, Dr. Bill Lucas, who was being groomed as one of the top physicists of his generation, and in my opinion, he still is, he was removed from uh, that program that was sponsored by the government. Why? Because he criticized relativity in one of his free to give talks. And he says, well, wait, well, but I'm right. And he says, doesn't matter if you're right, you don't do that. Now, that's not what we call critical thinking, nor teaching it or whatever. There are story after story like that of people who try to buck the system. And of course, we have a CMPS video that my father has done, which is the second most viewed video on our newer CMPS website. We used to be MPA, long story short. But anyways, 
it's seen a lot. And I'm going to show you that because it's got a really great explanation. Um, of course, here is Nick's channel, The Nick of Time. He's got almost 30, if not more than 30 videos. And you can look at them at your leisure. And he is the expert in special relativity time. And in fact, he fought the Einstein Institute in Germany to answer questions that painted them into a corner. I'm trying to get that story online. So we'll, we'll hopefully see that. Uh, of course, here's the uh, uh, website that I put together for Dr. Carzani, and it is the best, in my opinion, explanation for why special relativity is wrong. The, the, error is an error, the error is found, which is basically you can't have two frames because mathematically they collapse into one. There's no difference there physically or mathematically. And when you collapse them down to one, you end up with Newton. Don't need the neutrino. You can use non-relativistic kinematic equations, his autodynamic equations, which again are Newtonian. And uh, he has absolutely an incredible body of work, one of the great scientists of our generation. Uh, we have then, of course, our database put together by Greg Bolt and I started in, in 2008. It is a MySQL database, which uh, has a front end to it, which is our website, db for database.naturalphilosophy.org. There you can click on spe topics and special relativity, and there you will find 147 scientists, 66 books, and 263 abstracts that are all on special relativity. Most all of them, not all of them, but most all of them criticize, 99, maybe 98% of them criticizing and saying special relativity's got a problem in general relativity course, but we're looking specifically at special relativity. Now we're gonna take a look at my father's video. Um, I'll have a link below. You should still be hearing me, but what you see on the screen there is A and B observers. A is on a train moving. Uh, he then makes a, a let's, uh, let's go a laser light up and up, straight up, in this case he depicts it as moving. He makes it look like a diagonal. Doesn't matter in the explanation whether it's diagonal straight up to the right, to the left, doesn't matter. But basically he, that's what that diagram is saying. And he's saying that when you put hairspray in the cabin of the uh, train and you then see that laser light, that laser light is scattered at speed C to A and B and we'll let him describe it himself. And I contend that Observer B on the Earth is going to say the, see the same image as Observer A because he's observing the same event. And this light scatters over here at speed C. And I don't understand how he would see anything different unless something can change how, what after it scatters and make this different. You can actually argue, up, make other arguments for how or what Observer A might see. I would contend that it doesn't matter what Observer A sees. When that light scatters off of those particles, that image is going to go this way and this way. So if he happened to see it vertically, they'd both see it vertically. If he happened to see it moving to the right, moving to the right. Now. What I'm trying to do is, is explain my opinion of how light works in this situation. Apparently, other people must have a different idea of how light works because as the ship moves away, somehow that light goes forward. Not, not for A, but for B. And, and they make this statement all the time. Because of the motion of the spaceship, this is what you're going to see. Try, if you have a theory of how light works, apply that. I think that's one of my next slides. This is my opinion, a final opinion. Anyway, uh, I want to go on to this. If you don't agree, take the event, apply your theory of how light works, D decide for yourself what A sees and B sees. And then you can decide whether it's needed or not. I'm, right now, I'm convinced you don't need it. If you see the same thing, you don't, you don't need equations to transform something that's the same. You don't, length is not, does not contract. Time does not slow down. Paradoxes do not exist. And rel special relativity is not needed. So what is he saying? It's pretty simple. He's saying that if you don't have, apply your model for light to uh, this the situation of special relativity, which is one observer with a light source moving compared to another. Problem is, is mainstream physics as we know 
lights a photon. Oh, n n no, it it's a wave. N n no, it's a, it's a wave particle duality. Oh, oh, in quantum mechanics, in fact, that problem manifests itself. And oh, if we put a detector on, we see it as a particle. If you don't, then now we have to see the eraser history. Er it goes absolutely nuts. Why? There's no model for light. So my dad's saying, according to my model, uh, you don't need special relativity. What's going to happen is the light's going to do this. It works this way. This person, the observer, the event happens. Everybody sees it. That's the way it works. And so that is quite profound. Take a look at that whole uh, argument. There's actually some discussion that goes on there. It's about 30 minutes. I'll have the link below. And, of course, what happens to and what do, do the mainstream say about we dissidents? And when we criticize special relativity, well, this is what they say. This is main, mainstream's reaction to dissidents', dissidents arguments of special relativity. They say, well, of course, special theory of relativity has been tested over and over and over. And of course, that, they say, is because of GPS. Wrong! Ron Hatch has 30 patents in it, says it's not used. In fact, one of the GPS people that isn't Ron Hatch from another company that does GPS actually leaned over to Greg one day and he said, whispering, you know, it's a little dirty secret, but we don't use relativity in our GPS systems. Yet that's what we use all the time. That's what we teach millions, if not billions, of, of kids who are learning science on this planet. It's sad. Particle accelerators use relativistic kinematic equations, and they would not work without the special relativist theory of relativity because, of course, they're relativistic, and they wouldn't work without the neutrino. But Ricardo Carazzani shows, throw out the neutrino, throw out the problem. You don't need relativistic equations. You can have autodynamic, which are basically what he calls the autodynamic equations, which are actually Newtonian, et cetera, et cetera. GPS, of course, GPS would not function without it. We, I just talked about that. And, of course, attack Einstein because he's the most famous. That's another one we hear a lot about. Oh, if Einstein's wrong, who's right? Oh, Karazani, he just wants to be famous. Well, what does that have to do with anything about you learning about science and the way the world and the universe works? Turns out that if someone, if, if you go up to say and say, is Einstein wrong? And they come back at you and say, well, who's right? And you go, oh, so it doesn't matter if he's right or wrong. It matters who does it because that's fame and fortune. You're worried that, that you are who are really smart and your currency is I'm an intellect and you know so much and you don't know that he's wrong. Then, then who's right? It, it, it's who, not what is right. And then, of course, this is very true. Look it up. Dissidents and anti-Semite with the hyphen, without the hyphen. But basically, we dissidents are often... Um, described as people who don't like Jewish people. This is sort of like the uh, polit politicians who, when they lose, they blame somebody else and say it's women, it's men, it's this, it's that, whatever, it's the poor people, it's the rich people, whatever it is, everything but themselves. But of course, dissonance are not <laughs> anyway, and I, they don't care. We don't care who did it. If it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. You can be whatever. He's American. Uh, may, uh, we don't care. If, if he was a different religion, we'd be accused of that. So remember, don't take what anything I say or anybody else on faith. Take a look at all these resources. You've got literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Videos on special relativity being wrong. Um, abstracts and papers on special relativity being wrong. Books on the same subject. And we have all that information in the CMPS and we try to disseminate. That's why we're here. And remember, again, like I said, don't take my word for it. Stay critical. Stay thinking. Well, try that again. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm David Hilser. I am your science therapist. Ciao for now.